All right, let's take a closer look at the B44 and some of the stitches that it's going to create. So when we take a look at this sample here, I just want to share with you the fourth red overlock stitch because here on this sample, it shows the different positions of where those threads are going to go. So when you work with a four thread overlock stitch, you're going to have a right needle, which on here is shown in green. Then you're going to have a left needle, which on here is shown in yellow. And then your upper looper thread is shown here in blue and the lower looper is shown in red. So as you form this stitch, based on where you have your needles positioned will give you different widths of your stitch. And also, as we looked at earlier, you have the ability to adjust the width, the cutting width of this stitch also. So that will also affect how wide or how narrow that edge is going to be. Another stitch we're going to look at more closely is this beautiful rolled hem stitch. Now the rolled hem, a lot of times you can use this for the edging of napkins, you can use a, a little more decorative thread, or you could also use this for hemming uh, an edge of a ruffle. So we'll show you how to set that stitch up as well. But as we start to stitch with a four thread overlock stitch, or really any of these stitches, you're going to find with a serger, you don't have to always raise and lower your presser foot. Just simply stitch or set the fabric in front of that presser foot and step on your foot pedal. Now I intentionally curved that fabric edge so you could see that depending upon how much fabric you have over the edge of your needle plate on the right, that's how much is going to be trimmed away. You do have markings up here on the top of the machine itself for five eighths, half inch seam allowances. So if you are guiding and have a, a pattern that has a, a five eighths inch seam allowance, you could guide with that mark right there and it would trim off all of the extra fabrics. Now, as we sew with all of our sergers, we're going to then continue to sew different from your sewing machine. But if you ever have a sewing machine where you have to encourage or help your fabrics out of the machine, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands up, I want you to step on your foot pedal, and I want you to just sew. Because you're going to see that the fabric and that chain will feed out all by itself and you don't have to pull on the fabric. If you pull on your fabric, you could bend the needles, but your serger's just going to feed it out completely for you. And always have a tail or a chain after your fabric edge and then clip that straight away. So that makes a beautiful stitch, trimming away and finishing that edge. Now when I'm going to go to the rolled hem that we have here, on this apron, all I'm going to need to do is make a few simple adjustments to the stitch because remember it's built in on the machine. So we're simply going to pull our rolled hem lever back into position. I'm also going to clip the right, excuse me, the left needle thread, just sewing with the right needle thread. And let me pop this back into, that's my upper looper thread. And that is a thread, that upper looper thread is the thread, if I'm wanting to use any decorative thread, that's where I would put that decorative thread, is in the upper looper. So simply pull that stitch former back. I have my tools right here on the front that I can remove that left needle. And you notice that I keep my needle threaded before I, or as I'm removing the needle so that it doesn't accidentally fall into the machine. So I can set this needle off to the side. Pull the extra thread out of the machine. All right, let's take a look at that rolled hem. What I've done is I've increased the control on that lower looper thread. And what it's going to do is take the thread and the stitch and actually roll it all the way around the edge. So that top thread is going to be seen on the top and on the bottom. 
You just keep on sewing that chain, and now you have this rolled hem that's made right on that very edge. Now, if I want to increase and make this a gathered piece of fabric, remember earlier we were talking about this differential feed? So the differential feed is the knob that's on the left side of your machine, and all I'm going to do is bring this to a higher number setting. And I'm also going to slide that stitch former back into position and bring my tension knob back to the normal setting. All right, now what we're going to do is put a gathering edge on the other side. So I've set my differential feed to the longest setting. I'm also going to take my stitch length and place it to the longest setting. So we've gone from the shortest stitch length to the longest stitch length. And I'm also going to take my needle tension and just add a little bit of a, a little more control on it. There we go. So now we have gathered the edge of our fabric as well, which that really gives you a nice place that you can stitch this back into a seam or just keep that edge open if you're wanting to use that as a decorative application. The other feature that we have on the machine we talked about earlier also is going to be the flat lock stitch. And this is going to be a little device that's going to be attached onto the upper looper, it's called an upper looper converter. And this upper looper converter, we're going to cut the upper looper thread because we're not going to use it. We're going to pull it out. And then simply take the upper looper converter, we're going to snap this right in place and the eye of that converter is going to go right into, or the hook is going to go into the eye of the upper looper. So that's going to be fastened onto the eye of that upper looper that's built right, uh, comes with your machine and it's part of the accessories on your machine. So you can do those flat lock stitches that we looked at earlier when we're going to be piecing together battings. So those features all come with it. Now one thing I wanted to show you about the opportunity to make adjustment to the control of your stitches, if you're going to be sewing on anything that's heavy or you're going to be sewing on, uh, let's say a garment that might have a lot of flexibility to it, you don't, side seams, you don't want to have this line of stitching to show. So the way that you would in, that you would prevent these lines of stitching from showing is to increase your needle control on that individual needle, whether you're using the left needle or the right needle. And now, even when I pull on the seam, I can't see that needle line of stitching. So it's going to give you a much more secure seam, and it's also going to prevent those lines of stitching from showing on the right side of your fabric. Next, we're going to take a look at the B42 and how you could add a B42 to this machine in order to accomplish cover stitch and chain stitch for hemming.